morning from me and my pooch. I just kind of wanted to make this video. It's a little bit longer, a little bit different format. Um, hopefully informative about mushrooms and cooking, kind of what I personally do, not saying that it's professional, but you don't have to be professional to forage. You don't have to be professional to cook. And I love making kind of realistic, digestible content. And I am very excited to share with you guys. I had some time today. I just have a lot of emails to get out. So what kind of snacks do I make? What do I enjoy doing? And then maybe list some like fun stuff. So let's go. So first things first, I got this big basket of puff balls, just like in my last couple reels. Um, and my old coworker gave them to me. I thought, okay, I'm gonna make pumpkin soup today. Maybe I can incorporate them. But then as soon as I got to the car, I realized they're kind of yellow. So I thought this would be a really good learning experience. I can already smell them out here. That's why I'm doing it outside. Um, Lycoperidon is really the one that you don't want to breathe in. I don't know much about these. It's just, I wouldn't do it on purpose. And you can kind of see the spores coming off. It's like yellow foam. And basically what this means when it's not all the way white, this is what it's gonna look like. It's sporulating. So it basically turns into dust and releases its spores and it smells very strong. So I'm going to dispose of these, but unfortunate. Best. There you go. There's probably a lot more species of puffballs than you realize, um, like Lycoperidon perlatum, the gem-studded puffball, you have uh, Apioperidon pyriforme, and then the Calvatia gigantia, which is that large puffball, you have Calvatia cyanthiformis, which is the purple spore puffball, so there's a lot of different types of puffballs. Let's make some roasted pumpkin seeds, because it's tis the season. But I've got a couple pumpkins, so I'm sure you know where this is going. So... I kind of drew a really bad design, but let's get these out. So it's not rocket science. I'm just putting the seeds in here and I'm making, you already know, a helmet for my dog because I saw it online. I've been online a lot more now, now that I, now that I make small videos. Um, I've definitely been working on more community stuff because uh, that's really my goal. My essential goal is to work in the community and lead forays and teach people. I'm working on uh, writing up some classes for libraries to teach the basics of foraging and inoculation. Um, we're gonna be doing coffee grounds coming up in November, which I'm stoked about. And yeah, so these are just like fun videos. I'm not a professional at filming. I also don't have the equipment. As you can tell, my apartment is the size of a closet. <laughs> Uh, but I will be moving soon. I'm working a lot more with Tony and yeah, that's kind of the direction I see myself going. This is nasty. I have another pumpkin to make pumpkin soup, but I don't know if I'll make it on this video. Uh, I don't have carrots and coconut milk, so. And then when you rinse it, you can see all the little seeds come to the top. That's so cool. Sit, honey. It doesn't fit. <gasps> you are kidding. <laughs> she hates it. <laughs> you like pumpkins. I didn't know my god likes pumpkins. <laughs> I was told to boil them first. So then after they're dried, coat them in oil and salt and put them in for 45 minutes, 300 degrees stir. We're gonna make one of my favorite snacks that's super cheap and easy to make. It's healthy and you can get one of these dehydrators from like Walmart for pretty cheap. Cosmic crisp apples. Oop. Cut these apples. Just about this thickness. 
So I saved a couple apples because I want to make that huache drink and I got a watermelon for that. So just pop this bad boy on top. I know it's a little dirty. I have dehydrated more mushrooms in my lifetime than probably done anything else. Plug that in and that'll be left all day. So that's all you have to do for apple chips. Um, you don't have to se like season the apples. I just think it's they are too sweet if you put extra sugar. They're not gonna turn brown. I really like this, super easy. And before you come for me, I know that apples are way more expensive now than they used to be, but I've been doing this a long time and it's just, I'm stuck in my ways. I've also decided I wanna make soup. So we're on a journey to get carrots, coconut milk, and I'm gonna go type up a, uh, an email, but I thought it'd be really fun to show you things that are on my dashboard because I collect things. So I have dried <laughs> our malaria species on my dashboard. I made these little brushes and that's fun. <laughs> um, I like to collect bones, but I don't know a lot about bones. I have a lot of artist skunks and Casey, my friend Casey from Mycorrhizing made me this wonderful like uh, sage and lavender incense and I've got birch bark because I like birch bark. And then this is from my backpacking foray, we all signed that, you know, lovely, so it's up there. There's a dried reishi that I forgot to take out and then I used to have more bugs. Oh gosh, don't look at that. My um, car wires are busted so apparently everything is wrong with my car but it's not i swear so i found this wonderful cicada on a hike i have some bird feathers but i've given most of those away i give those to friends and loved ones and then i have the sticker that says belief in yourself <laughs> okay so i want to make a segment about this little cicada here because i have him in perfect condition He's on his little surfboard, and it's not really about the cicada as much as it is about a fungus that infects cicadas. Uh, everybody is very interested in cordyceps, and some of you probably might know the Massospora uh, fungus, but it basically infects the cicadas underground, and they and they come up there. It uh, deteriorates the genitals, so when the males, it causes them to be hypersexual and then just spray out all the spores. The genitals are gone, so you can't actually have sex, but it's hypersexual and just spreading spores to all these other cicadas. It's super hypersexual. I just thought this uh, paragraph from Entangled Love, because I always have this book in my car, I never know when I'm gonna get time to read it, and I always want to. So I wanna read you a paragraph that really interested me, and maybe it'll interest you in the book, because I love this book. Uh, in 2018, Kassen and his team analyzed the chemical profile of the plugs of fungus that sprout from the cicada's broken bodies. They were amazed to find that the fungus produced cathinone, an amphetamine in the same class as the recreational drug mephedrone. Cathinone naturally occurs in the leaves of cat, or catha edulis, a plant cultivated in the Horn of Africa and the Middle East, which has been chewed for centuries by humans for its stimulant effects. Cathinone had never been found outside of plants. More astonishing was the presence of psilocybin, which was one of the most abundant chemicals in the fungal plugs. Although one would have to eat several hundred infected cicadas to notice any effect. So I just thought that was super cool. Anyway, let's move on. Y'all, these are growing everywhere right now. Foliota. I finished my pepitas. They're good. Another tip and trick for my busy friends out there. I used to work a lot, a lot, like three jobs, and it's really busy. Crackpots are your friend. You don't have to put all those fancy seasonings in there. Just put in water, salt, and pepper. Just let it roast while you're at work. Well, I don't have a vegetable peeler. I am the vegetable peeler. And I just kind of diced up and peeled the uh, pumpkin. I've got carrots that I'm gonna peel and then just kind of like, cut into pieces but what's great that was really loud um oven roasting you can roast anything so for example i've got these sweet potatoes i'm literally just going to poke some holes and we're just gonna put them in the oven um and then when they're soft it usually takes like an hour or so i just have it at 300 degrees you know this is all stuff that you just throw in the oven and just let it sit there. Like that's what I do all the time. And when it comes to vegetables, it's so much better than buying frozen vegetables and buying canned stuff. Like just buying fresh stuff and then roasting it while you're gone, dehydrating it while you're gone. The same thing how you deal with mushrooms. 
it is so much healthier and it's not a lot of work so i'm trying to just like give advice on how to prep this stuff without all of the the headache of like what did i just watch did i just watch this complicated cooking thing of 50 different ingredients and then garlic i'm just gonna cut in half oil it put in foil and just shove it in the oven too just shove stuff in the oven shove stuff in the crock pot shove stuff in here um that's how i live my life <laughs> And that way I can eat a lot of really good vegetables, fresh stuff, and get the benefits from it. I want to add, this might look bad because you shouldn't leave your oven going while you're gone. So I did bake the vegetables, did other chores, and then went on a hike while they were cooling because you should also cool vegetables before blending. We're out on a hike and we found apio peridon pyriforme or the pear-shaped puffball and you can tell if they're good they're all the way white yeah. these are apio peridon pyriforme in their sporulating form don't breathe it in So I let the vegetables cool off, I put them all in this blender, and really pumpkin soup is what you want it to be, so I'm gonna add in this coconut milk. I also don't have a can opener. I don't have a, a peeler or a can opener, so uh, I just got knives. I have some of this left over from being sick, so we're just gonna add that chicken bone broth turmeric because I put that in literally everything cinnamon a dash of Wisconsin syrup and garlic so besides the monstrous mess that is now my kitchen oh it's not a good way to show it yep I will make bread for it tomorrow. Mm.